Hello everybody and uh, welcome to our workshop on electrification and decarbonisation solutions for industry. Um, we have a very exciting uh, workshop ahead and we look forward to spending the next uh, three days with you as we, we um, discuss this topic. Uh, my name is Richard Sassoon. I'm the Executive Director of the Strategic Energy Alliance here at Stanford and I've just got a few, just a few things to, to go over before we get started with the workshop, and I hand over to um, Professor Yi Trey to, to make, and Elizabeth Endler from Shell to make some opening remarks. So today's agenda, uh, we start off with some welcoming remarks from Professor Yi Trey, the director of the Precourt Institute, and Elizabeth Endler from Shell. We then have a keynote address from Avon Majumda, and we then have two panels, one is uh, the challenge. This is looking at broadly at what is the challenge that we're facing here. And then after a break, we have one where we focus on resource extraction industries, uh, mining, oil and gas, and so on and so forth. At the end, we'll have a, um, a wrap up. I'll, I'll run the wrap up. We have uh, note takers who will sort of summarize what went on during the day. So we'll have five, 10 minutes to just go over what went on. And then at the end of the day, we are giving everyone the opportunity to network in private breakout rooms if they want to do so. So that if you have um, someone that you want to talk with after the meeting, you can just privately chat to them. Um, and um, then if you uh, let Evan Schwartz know via the chat feature, just send him a private chat and say you want to have a um, you want to have a chat at the end, a private breakout room with set of particular pe people he'll set that up at 12 o'clock so that at, well, 12 o'clock our time at the end of the meeting so that you can have that that conversation if you need it i will remind you of this throughout the day so um i'm going to hand it over to Yi to um to, to give some welcoming remarks Yi, Yi you're on uh you're on mute thank you oh yeah okay no it's good so uh, well, thank you, Richard. I'd like to welcome everybody to attend this uh, electricity industry ele electrification workshop. Uh, a little bit of background, uh, our, our SEA member, Strategic Energy Alliance, um, particularly Shell. Uh, last year, we have quite a bit of discussion and saying, hey, hey there could be a potential great opportunity uh, we have not discussed or have not done enough yet. Uh, that's in the industry sectors to electrify the industry, to help decarbonize the industry. So uh, under Richard's uh, leadership, uh, we set up a committee here at Stanford involving faculty as well as our industry member to look into uh, what's possible and it's very clear we need a workshop to uh, discuss about this. Um, if I look at the big picture, under pre previous leadership or pre core Institute, Alun Majanda, Sally Benson, and uh, early on in Leno, uh, pre core Institute has been setting up very exciting initiatives to address different areas of uh, decarbonization. You know, we have bits and watts initiative to address electricity <clears throat> grid sector, uh, storage X for energy storage. Uh, There's a natural gas initiative. Uh, and some of you also know, we will be launching in May, the hydrogen initiative. So it's, it will be a very exciting one. Uh, and there's others, you know, a sustainable finance initiative to really look into how do we do economics and policy, right, and so on. So what's really exciting today here is the, well, about a quarter of uh, carbon coming from is from industry. Whether it's from steel refining, it's from cement, from uh, chemicals, you know, plastics and other chemicals refining. Um, this is a really big sector we need to address, as well as thinking about 
you know, transportation. There's so many lithium ion batteries coming out. We need those uh, mining those resources. You know, where do we get all those lithium, cobalt, nickel, right? It's uh, copper and aluminum. You know, aluminum is less a problem. It's more of the, uh, the, the first several element that's a issue we need to look into. That also requires us to look into, well, overall the area of sustainable manufacturing. So I hope today's workshop with uh, many experts right here from industry, from academia, uh, we can really identify the problems and also potential solution together. After this uh, few days workshop, uh, what's coming out I hope is, uh, uh, which can lead to the action at Stanford side is, one potential thing is uh, this mechanism right now, pre-core pioneering project at pre-core institute, we would like to organize our faculty together to we fund the research to get things going. The second one could be uh, leading to co-planning with our industry members uh, for a sustainable manufacturing initiative. So this will go bigger. Uh, and uh, so we saw this short introduction. I think I would like to take a, a pause right here and pass to uh, Elizabeth uh, from Cheryl's angle and see what, uh, what Elizabeth is uh, thinking about. Thanks so much. I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to be here today and appreciate everyone investing their time and their expertise in this workshop. From Shell's experiences across pre-court in Strategic Energy Alliance, StoreDex, Bits and Watts, the National Natural Gas in Initiative, we've had the opportunity to see how Stanford's multifaceted approach involving research, education, and convening provides a unique opportunity to learn from one another and develop insights that support tackling key energy challenges. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of the next three days. Before I begin, my legal colleagues request that I remind you to consult www.shell.com for detailed investor information. So with that out of the way, in the next few minutes, I'd like to just share with you a few elements uh, from Shell's perspective, drawn from our experience as a leading energy company on our powering progress strategy and how it relates to industrial decarbonization. So Powering Progress was launched in February of 2021, and it sets out Shell's strategy to accelerate the transition of our business to net zero emissions in step with society progress to achieve the 1.5 degree centigrade goal. It's designed to create value for our investors, customers, and wider society. And it has four main goals, generating shareholder value, achieving net zero emissions, powering lives, and respecting nature. By generating shareholder value, powering progress delivers financial strength to enable the transformation. We will boost demand for low carbon energy by working with customers, partners, and governments to accelerate the transition to net zero emissions where society stops adding to the total amount of greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere. Powering progress also means powering lives and livelihoods with energy products. The supply of affordable, reliable, and sustainable energy is crucial for addressing global challenges, including poverty and inequality. Our goal to respect nature focuses on protecting the environment, reducing waste, and making a positive contribution to biodiversity. Two of Shell's beliefs about our role in the energy transition are, one, each sector that we serve will require a different combination of energy and decarbonization solutions on the path to net zero emissions. And two, accelerating the transition profitably will mean offering low carbon solutions to customers depending on their requirements, while optimizing value across products and sectors. So I've used the word sector, so why a sector approach? The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has made clear that the world needs to undertake rapid and deep transitions in each of the areas that contribute to global emissions, including electric power, transport, buildings, agriculture, and industries like steel, chemicals, and cement, which produce materials for our daily lives. These each pose significant and distinct challenges. In terms of industrial decarbonization, Shell has set a 2030 target to reduce emissions by 50% from our operations and from the energy we 
supply to run our operations as compared to 2016. To do this, in the near term in 2022, we will focus on transforming existing refineries and chemical plants into lower carbon energy and chemicals parks, focusing on improving energy efficiency and increasing investment in carbon capture and storage. Looking ahead, we're working to design liquefied natural gas plants and petrochemical plants so that they can be carbon neutral. These will require energy engineering and technology advances, whether for feedstock, process heating, or process operations. Energy intensive industries like chemicals, steel, and cement share common characteristics such as long asset lifetimes, high energy dependency, and complexity of electrification. Decarbonization here will therefore be more investment intensive and more technically demanding endeavor compared to other sectors. Electricity has a big role to play. It's the fastest growing part of the energy system and when coming from renewable sources has a big lever effect on emissions. One example of direct electrification Shell is undertaking in the industrial sector is the development of electric cracking technology. In 2020, Shell and Dow announced a joint development agreement to accelerate technology to electrify ethylene steam crackers to provide lower carbon based chemicals. Where direct electrification is not feasible, whether because a molecular feedstock is required or extreme temperature requirements make combustion of low carbon fuels much more attractive, electricity generated from renewable power can also be used to create hydrogen. Shell is also looking to help industrial decarbonization by bringing our expertise to bear in places where customers are and where industrial processes are already underway. And for this, the integration of this direct and indirect electrification is key. For example, in the Netherlands, in the port of Rotterdam, Shell will be providing green electrons through our Hans Kutz Nord offshore wind farm. We also have existing infrastructure at our Shell Pernis Refinery, uh, now also known as uh, Shell Energy and Chemical Park Rotterdam, which uses hydrogen, has a large electric load, own bolt substations, pipelines, and so forth. We're able to use that infrastructure and have an immediate sink for the hydrogen produced, which creates predictable demand and utilization of the assets that we're building. The green pro hydrogen produced will initially be used as a substitute to partially decarbonize existing fuels. Building on more than 50 years of scenario analyses, we've recently published a series of sketches that highlight plausible pathways for regional and country level energy transitions that involve technology and policy innovations, highlighting key sectors within each country's economy. For example, using steel as an example, technology pathways include moving toward lower intensity processing, using hydrogen and electricity rather than conventional means, coal to gas switching, and CCS. While the policy, on the policy side, things that support decarbonization could include establishing a CO2 price for the industry, either on an industry basis or as part of an economy-wide measure, or alternatively, establishing policy frameworks to drive demand creation through either minimum requirements or public procurement to support market creation for low carbon footprint steel. I hope these examples mentioned give you a sense of how this workshop will help contribute to the working together to form the coalitions across the value chain sector by sector that will encourage the necessary collective actions to transform these challenges into opportunities. I've been fortunate, fortunate to witness and participate in the rapid growth of renewable electricity, energy storage, and electrification of transport buildings and industry during the past 10 years. And as a chemical engineer, I'm truly excited by the scope and range of opportunities in front of us for industrial decarbonization to move at a similarly rapid pace. The word transformation has come up several times, which inspires thoughts of change, innovation, coupled with significant effort. Convening here gives us the opportunity to gather perspectives, digest, and synthesize information in new ways to inform the interdisciplinary research questions that need to be tackled with urgency and resolve. Shell's CEO recently encouraged us at Shell to go faster and be bolder. And I encourage you to use this workshop to do likewise as we work to solve commercial, technical, and policy challenges of the energy transition. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, with this uh, short and powerful introduction,